Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography, and in this video, I'm going to be walking you through my post-processing setup and why I find it so effective for both commercial and travel photography. So let's get into it. So the very first thing that you're probably thinking of, and the first thing I'm going to get into, is the laptop, the computer that runs it all. Now I used to have a laptop and a desktop and run them both at the same time, and that just got a bit too cumbersome. So I ended up switching my setup around, and I ended up going with a 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar that's running 16 gig RAM, a 512 gig SSD hard drive, and a 3.5 gigahertz processor that really does well for photo editing. With video editing, if it's doing something really strenuous, it can slow down, so you'd probably want to up the RAM a bit, but for me, 16 gigabytes is perfectly fine because stills is my primary uh, form of income and business. So 16 gig was perfectly fine for the laptop and it runs so, so well. Now connected to that, is the big screen you've got here. This is a, I think it's pronounced BenQ or Bank or, I don't know, it's spelled B-E-N-Q. This monitor is the SW2700PT. It's a weird name. Companies have very weird names for certain things, but this monitor is brilliant. It's not overly expensive. I think I paid a bit over a thousand Australian dollars for it. Uh, 27 inch monitor and it covers 99% of the RGB spectrum. So you've got sort of sRGB, then RGB, then the one above it that begins with T that I can't remember off the top of my head. But that's sort of your color spectrums and the more you go up the broader the color spectrum is. So 99% RGB will cover you for pretty much everything you need to do unless you really want that super high resolution, every color down to the morsel uh, amount of detail. But for the price and what this actually is, it's a brilliant monitor. And then to go with that, I bought a an X-Rite 1T, I think it is, uh, monitor calibrator. And that's a brilliant little device. It just really got this monitor calibrated correctly to the colors and it matches my laptop screen perfectly. So when I produce an image, I can send it across to my phone. I know how the photo is actually going to look and I can be really sure that the result that I see on the screen is the result that I get when I actually send the image off to print, social media, whatever it may be. Now, because I'm connected running the laptop to this, I'm not going to have the laptop right in front of me. I don't want to be using the keyboard and mouse. I went with the Apple keyboard. I got the big one with the numbers pad because it, this is just living on my desk and then I've gone with a Apple Magic Mouse as well. And that is a really, really good little setup. It's easy, I can, I can take the computer off, go travel, go to a studio, go on location, tether, do what I need to do, come back, plug it into the monitor, and then I've got that setup ready and running. The laptop is also sitting on a 12 south curve, and the reason I got this one is because the hard drives I use sit under it. And I'm gonna get to the hard drives in just a second but I really wanted to try and keep this space minimal and clean. So I've gone with a raised laptop stand so that the hard drives and everything else can fit underneath. It's really clean, really simple, nice and easy. One other editing tool that I find really, really valuable is this. This is the Wacom Intuos tablet. It's only the small one. It's got a few configurable buttons, but it connects via either Bluetooth or USB. So if I need to charge it, obviously USB, but if I want to be on the road without wires, cables, whatever it may be, this is brilliant. So, so far you can see how this setup gives me quite a bit of flexibility. Being able to take the laptop away with me, go wherever I need to, I can take the tablet if I want to sort of get into a bit of Photoshop work and a bit more fine detail stuff. Or when I'm back here, I can plug into the monitor, I've got a really big screen, keyboard and mouse external so I don't have to touch the laptop most of the time. Now, just a little addition, and this isn't really specific to editing, but it's nice for me because I like playing music relatively loud. Uh, I like a good bit of audio, so I've gone with a 
Logitech Z623, I believe it is. And it's a 2.1 THX certified uh, set of speakers. But all of that out of the way, it is brilliant. It's so loud, you can control the bass and the volume all from the one command on the desk. And it's small, it's easy, except for the subwoofer, which is massive, that's actually hidden away under the desk with all the cables and whatnot so that you can't see it and it keeps the desk nice and clean and minimal. But for overall sound quality, absolutely love it. I think it's really, really good, nice bass. And if you like playing your music, this is certainly a really good and not overly expensive option. So it's certainly something to look into if you want to uh, expand the audio of your desk setup. One thing that I absolutely could not live without is this. This is a notebook, obviously. It's not a lot special about it. This is a Fujifilm Professional Services one that I got sent, um, which is a good notebook, but pretty well any notebook will do. But it's just so, so easy to, and quick to just write down a few notes when you need to, if you think of an idea, if you need to write a note for a client or something about a client shoot that you're doing. Everything just goes in there and you can translate it, transcribe it, move it to wherever you need to afterwards. It's just really quick, really easy, and very, very valuable to be able to have that with you. If you're also wondering about the computer monitor and why it's not actually on a big base plate, which it does come with a big base, it's on an external monitor arm that keeps cables managed all the way in the back. And then I can move the monitor forwards, backwards, up, down, turn it sideways, uh, turn it vertical if need be and it really makes for a very versatile setup as well as keeping it clean. Off the desk, minimal footprint, and just an overall really, really handy setup to have. Probably the most important thing for editing is the actual program. So I use Capture One Pro because I am a Fujifilm shooter at the moment. Uh, I use Capture One Pro and Photoshop as well. I use Photoshop because obviously that's a brilliant, brilliant tool to use but for a general processing, library, cataloging, all that sort of stuff, I really do love Capture One, especially for client shoots. I have a specific hard drive for client shoots, uh, and as promised, I am gonna to touch on that in just a second. But that hard drive, I can actually store my sessions on, and that's whether I'm tethering, importing, culling, processing, exporting, all of that, I can do that for each individual client shoot. It's a really great way to keep everything in its own little space, give it room to process, edit, and then once you've done it, you can catalog that by itself without having it take up so much extra space and room on your hard drive or your main hard drive. Now, whether I'm at home or on the road, my travel drives are usually these lacy, rugged drives. I really, really like them. They're nice and solid. They've got a good solid feel to them. They're not SSD, but hopefully one day they will be because I really do enjoy actually having that hard drive. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit more protected. That rubberized area around it really makes for a bit more security. I know it's not the best security in the world, but at least it's doing pretty well for me. And I've had three of them so far and they've all worked really, really well for me. Touch wood. But yeah, I've found them to probably be the best hard drives that I've used to this point. But with SSD coming more and more, I think that will change. But for traveling, having that extra bit of rigidness, security, whatever it may be that you feel like you need, this hard drive certainly does help with, you know, with settling your nerves a little bit when it comes to images and backing them up. Especially on the road, if, and even if you're shooting for clients, that is an absolute must. You need to have some form of workflow that you can back yourself up so that if you lost an SD card, you've got a safety. If you've lost two SD cards, you've got a safety. So if you lose all of them, you're really out of luck. <laughs> it's a really bad time for you if that does happen. Hopefully it doesn't, but you need to just have that kind of backup and workflow for a sense of security, knowing that you've got safety for your files. So this entire setup is really, really functional for what I use it for. And 
a really quick way of working and going between commercial and travel photography. So I can be on the road, take the laptop. If I want to be here at home working, needing to process a lot, a lot of shoots, then this setup makes it so much easier with the big screen. I can listen to music. I know I can feel comfortable and just be in my own little creative space for a pretty reasonable price. Without the laptop, all of this setup, including the monitor calibrator, comes to probably somewhere between 1700 and 2000 Australian dollars. So it's a really, really reasonable setup for what you're getting. Now, if you are interested in any of these products or you wanted to check out a bit more information, have a look at the links in the description down below. All of them are going to be there. They are Amazon affiliate links, so I will get a small kickback if you do decide to buy something, but that also helps support the channel. So I really do appreciate it if you do that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you in the next video.